Welcome to episode 19 on the Purpose Driven Funnel Show. Today I've got Bob Minhas who coaches entrepreneurs on how to leave their 9 to 5. And he shares some really big insights on that big question that we all face when we first get started in our business. And that question is, what should I do? Bob shares three huge insights that I know is going to give you some value. If you take what he says and run with that, I have no doubt that you're going to shortcut your success and how long it takes you to launch your business successfully. So sit back and I hope you enjoy the show. I'm embarking on a journey to grow a successful online business so I can break free from my 9 to 5. The question is, how will I do it? Find out right here on the Purpose Driven Funnel Show where you will get an insider's view as I interview experts who have succeeded. I'm doing it because my why is bigger than my 9 to 5. Life is meant to be a joy, not a chore. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash purpose-driven funnels. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Well, today I've got Bob Minhas on the episode today to share with us. He is the founder of Entrepreneur House, and what he specializes in is coaching clients through basically leaving their nine to five, kind of like the goal is for us, and kind of showing those people how they can build a business with less risk. So I'm really excited to have Bob on the show today to kind of share some of his expertise and insights. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for for making this happen. I appreciate it. Always excited to talk to people about their entrepreneurial journeys and ventures. Yeah, absolutely. We're definitely excited to learn we'll learn from you today. So why don't we just kind of start by just kind of telling us your, a little bit about yourself, your story. Like how did you get started in this business? Yeah. So I'll tell you, Sean, like many other people who probably don't admit it, I was a forced entrepreneur. So, uh, I meet a lot of people who lose their job through a circumstance or another. I was uh, let go in the recession back in 2008. So uh, I always had this uh, side hustle already. I had this business that was kind of running, but I didn't put a lot of effort into it. And so when I lost my job, uh, it was a tough economy back then. I figured, you know, at the time I was married, I talked to my wife and her mom and, uh, you know, they were really supportive about, no, just do your own thing. Right. And back then we didn't call it entrepreneurship. We called it self-employment. Right. You just, no, right. Like, just have your own business. It's fine. And um, uh, so I started there. I was doing that for, for a long time. I had a company that we grew really rapidly and had a lot of success. Uh, and you guys in the States have it, but in Canada, we have this channel called HGTV. So I got to work with a lot of HGT professionals and uh, had a lot of big clients. It was great. It was awesome. And then uh, went through a life change, went through divorce, uh, went through a lot, uh, ended up becoming homeless and, uh, you know, just kind of couch surfing here and there and, uh, you know, decided I needed to reset. So I went back to the workforce and I went back to the workforce working for government doing business coaching, which at the time I'd never heard of. It was a new concept for me. Uh, So I joined that team and started actually uh, honing my coaching skill and then, uh, Not too long ago, I decided to leave that, return to entrepreneurship, because this time I knew how to do it without having to go back (laughs) to make sure I set up for success so that I wouldn't have to worry about this happening again, no matter what life circumstances are. Uh, And then I realized when I did it, hmm, I I really should show other people how to do it. Because I I imagine, Sean, you've probably run into entrepreneurs that uh, they start their own thing and maybe they go back to work or maybe they grow it as a side hustle week. We, we, we don't meet a lot of people who take that full leap successfully without some sort of, you know, plan or support or what happens. Right. So yeah. That's really my story, right? I'm a father of three. I'm a TEDx organizer in my local community. I, I'm a fan of hot yoga. I'm not afraid to admit it as a man. <laughs> um, but um, that that's me in a nutshell. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. So you kind of were, you kind of went from riches to rags back to riches again, it sounds like. Yeah, riches to rags, back to comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Working okay. my way back to riches. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on that path, which is great because 
you know, one of the things I learned, Sean, is my priorities were out of whack the first time. I had the sense of, oh, I need to get a, a big house and a big boat and have millions of dollars. And, uh, you know, I, I matured a little bit and, uh, you know, homelessness gives you a lot of humility and my priorities changed. And, you know, now it's, uh, I, I invest all the money I make and, and all the capital I have, I invest it in my kid's future. That's all I do. So I live comfortably. I'm happy. Uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I'm happy with what I do, but every penny I get that's extra, I try and invest in my, my kid's future. So really that's where I am. So I'm getting back to riches, but I think it's more my kids riches, but I'm okay with that because they'll take care of me when I'm old. So it's good. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. I like that plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, for you, it sounds like, I mean, you kind of, you hit the bottom and for you, it was going back to employment, right? To find somebody to work for. And that's how you fell into the business coaching, which then kind of launched you into what you do now. So, and that's, that's a good example of kind of something just almost kind of fell in your lap, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're not wrong, Sean. And I, you know, I, I sometimes I'm uh, a little too embarrassed to admit it, but you know what, Sean, I look at it as the universe that saved me, right? I was here, I was for almost over a year, uh, just relying on the kindness of other people. I had a few nights in my car. I had a few nights in a storage unit and the Canadian winter is not forgiving. So, uh, uh, I, I think it, it got to a point where when, when we say it fell into my lap, I really believe, uh, and not to sound too out there, I really believe the universe brought it to me. I think somebody out there, you know, I believe I have faith and I believe in spirituality. I think somewhere out there, something said, you know, I think Bob's done his due diligence. It's time for him to give back. And uh, that that's what I do now. So even though I have a business and it's a for-profit business, uh, everything I do is about how am I giving back and in service to the people that I want to help. So uh yeah fell in my lap but i i still think there were other forces at work to make it happen for me yeah absolutely i i, I totally understand because uh I, I don't believe in chance by any happenstance either so i yeah. i believe that things happen for a reason but yeah. for for a lot of entrepreneurs and myself included for you know one of the big struggles that you know that we go through is okay i've decided I want my own business. I'm tired of working for somebody else, you know, tired of punching the clock or whatever. I want my own dream. I want to be able to make my own money, you know, be able to go on vacation when I say I can go on vacation, all these things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. then they start this journey where it's like, okay, well, what do I do? Yeah. So what, I mean, how do you figure that piece out? I mean, a lot of us, we get stuck and I went in circles for like literally probably four years. I went in circles just trying to figure something out and not really knowing how to do it or knowing what to do. So do you have any tips for anybody or advice about those people that kind of get stuck in that? What do I do now once I've decided to start a business? That's a great question, Sean. I'll tell you, ideation is is the number one call I get, Sean. You get people who say, I want to leave my job and I want to do something uh, more fulfilling. I want to have time with my family, but they don't know what to do. You know, in the old days, Sean, people had an idea, they launched the business. Now it's the other way around. People know they want the freedom and the, the, the benefits and joy of entrepreneurship. And they're willing to do the work, Sean. It's just, they don't, uh, you know, they don't know what they're good at or, you know, they, they're just not clear at what they can do. And so I give them this trifecta. I, I tell them there's, all, there's three things to look at in ideation, even before you do a <clears throat> business plan or anything like that. And the first thing is you got to figure out what you're good at in terms of your work experience. So uh, in my day, you know, people often work the same job for 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, now when I meet a lot of my, my younger compadres, you know, uh, the millennial workforce, they tend to bounce around to different opportunities, which is totally cool, right? They're trying to find what resonates with them. But what I tell them to do is I tell them, look at your resume and look at your LinkedIn. Where have you been? What have you done? Whether it's customer service, uh, whether it's serving burgers at Burger King, whatever it was, think like write down every piece of work you've done and every skill you've participated, every part of your job description you've ever had, write them all down, get on a whiteboard, chalkboard, write it all down. And it, it, you'll be amazed at how many skills, like it's a real validating thing to look at how many skills you actually have, right? You might, someone might say, Sean, well, uh, I, I, I was slinging burgers and then I was cleaning toilets and it's like, okay, so you have the ability to, you know, work in service to humble yourself and to do work that's important to your, uh, to the company that you work with. So write all those things down. Then the second thing I ask them to do is I say, and you know, Sean, sometimes this is better done with a glass of wine or a nice scotch. I, I like them. I like to ask them and, and figure out what is it they love to do? What is it that makes them happy? 
what drives them to be passionate, whether it's from their work experience or whether it's just from life, right, Sean? Whether it's uh, if they're playing shinny hockey at night or, you know, they're spending time with their kids doing amazing things that they enjoy. What are those things they love to do? What gets them excited? It doesn't even have to be work or business. Just write down on another whiteboard piece of paper, chalkboard, write down all those things, make you happy, patient, excited. And then the last thing I ask them to do is look for what the market needs. And that one sounds a bit more complex. It sounds like, oh, you got to do a lot of market research and, and studies. And, and, you know, that's true. But most people have an idea of what the market needs. They just don't realize it yet. And so when they start talking to people and asking people, hey, what's your biggest pain point? Where do you struggle doing what? And, and just have conversations with people. Don't make it a formal survey. And after a while, you start to see patterns happening and you start to realize, wow, if this was a thing in the market, you know, I think, I think that would be something that's valuable. And then, you know, think about what you're passionate about. Think about what your work experience is. How do you align all three of those? That's the magic button, Sean. How do you align where your work experience has been, what you really love to do, and what the market's willing to pay? And that last thing, Sean, that's what a lot of newbie entrepreneurs miss. They, they figure out what they love to do and maybe what they have experience in, but they don't actually look at if the market gives a damn, about, a darn about it. And that's the problem is if the market's not willing to, to pay for it, that's where you flounder and you figure you, you, you sort of um, you get on a hamster wheel, right? You're just, you're just feel like you're in a rut and you can't get out of it. So that's, that's the three, the, that's the trifecta. I love to give all entrepreneurs is just figure those three out. What do you love to do? What skills have you had and what does the market want? Yeah, those are, that's a, you said a lot of really good things there that I want to kind of touch on some of those things, but um, so talking about that last one, kind of the big one that you were talking about with the market needs, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, that one, kind of like you said, you, like, well, usually when I hear about it, it's this, somebody just says, okay, you need to figure out what the market needs. And then it's just like big cloud of what? Big old mm-hmm. gray cloud of um, where do I go? How do I yeah. figure that out? How do I know? So I like what you said about having conversations with people. Can you dive yeah. in a little bit more about that? Like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, where do you go? I mean, what's your kind of approach that you usually tell people to do? With that? Yeah. So usually it's, it's, it's again, having conversations with people in your network, people, you know, uh, people you admire, right. Always look for, for, you know, you and I call them influencers, Sean, but look for those people in your community that stand out that are leaders and talk to them and ask them. But you know, there's a boring part to this as well is, you know, don't be afraid to do secondary market research, which is, Read a lot of magazines, follow a lot of TED Talks. TED Talks are great uh, opportunities for ideation because those are people sharing new concepts and ideas, right? Mm-hmm. When, you, when you watch a TED Talk that really resonates with you and inspires with you, I think that's a, that's a really key component. So secondary research, look for what other people are talking about. Primary research, talk to those leaders, those influencers around you. Talk to the people you admire. Uh, it could be your parents, it could be your pastor, it could be whoever it is that really, you know, represents leadership in your community and say, Hey, uh, I'd love to hear, you know, what do you, th- what's going on around us? What do you think we need as a community to thrive or what do you think's out there? And then you build on that. Right. So, you know, you talk to someone local and they say, yeah, you know what? Childcare is really weak here. Like we, a lot of working moms, I can't find childcare. Don't, don't stop there. Keep going. Okay. So how do you get to that next level? So maybe it's all right, childcare. Well, how do I build something that helps moms all across the Southern States or all across the States in Canada? Do I build an app? Do I create a website? Do I create a community, right? It never has to stop at localizing it to your local community. Just keep going out of that based on your skill. And so primary and secondary research, those, honestly, Sean, those are the best ways to continue, like to dive in and figure it out. You got to have lots of conversations. Oh, sorry. You know what, Sean? Facebook groups are awesome for that. You know, getting into Facebook groups, watching what people are talking about, right? Especially if they're Facebook groups geared around what I, what you wrote down earlier about what you're good at and what you're passionate about, finding groups that align with that and hearing what people are talking about there. Oh, it's half the time, Sean, the work is done for you because they're literally in there saying, there was this, I wish there was that. And it's just a matter of you figuring out, instead of saying, I can't do that, it's how can I? So instead of saying, I can't, it's how can I? It might sound like the most ridiculous idea. Think of Uber five years ago, but it's okay. Well, how can I do that? Yeah, no, I like that. That's good. And, and talking about the Facebook Facebook groups, I'm glad you mentioned that because yeah. that's kind of when things started to happen for me. Is okay. I was out on Facebook and Facebook groups, and basically, I just found a group of like minded people, like kind of people where you know I might find the type of people that I would do service for, I would work for. Right. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. Just watching in there and really literally, like, just like you said, like 
at, like all the time. Somebody will come in there and they'll ask a question. How do you do this? How do you do that? Or, you know, and it's like, hey, I have those skills. I can reach out to that person to say, hey, let's have a conversation. But you're right. I really like that because it's really easy just to go in and have conversations like that, yeah. and engage in a group, and you can really find a lot of opportunities in there, and it doesn't cost anything. Not at all. And again, Sean, it's about looking for patterns, right? You're not only looking at one question, you're looking at all the questions. What are all the questions coming around about? What are the patterns? Are people talking about things that they can do, but don't feel confident about? Are they talking about things they can't do and they need someone to do it, right? Like look for those patterns and then always go back to that chart of what you're good at and what you're passionate about. And that's, and then now you've just started the market part and, and that's it. And now, you know, Sean, I'm oversimplifying it, but at least it gets you started, right? At least it gets you down a path to, you know, start figuring out if it's for you. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, I, I appreciate that because that really kind of clears up a lot of the you know cloudiness that often occurs when somebody says, "Just you know, what does the market need? Go find out." And you're like, "Yeah, huh? what? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. does that even mean?" <laughs> you're absolutely right. You know, another another concept, Sean, is a lot of times people will start with a turnkey side hustle and build something out of it, right? So a good example is you know there there uh, a lot of yays and nays around network marketing and things like that. But I'll tell you, a lot of people start there and then build an idea out of that. Because yeah. the, that, that, that turnkey structure, whether it's uh, building funnels or whether it's network marketing, all that stuff, it, you know, it, it kind of helps you understand how to deal and work with people and figure out what's needed in the market. I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs do that. They, they've started in something that's turnkey already done. And then they sort of leap out into their own venture with, you know, a little bit more uh, of their own flavor to what, what it is they want to do. Yeah, that, that's good. And I appreciate that. And I want to dive in at two of those other couple of points that you, you brought up too, because, you know, I've, I've definitely heard a lot of things around those as well. Like, for example, you mentioned skills, like what are you good at? Yeah. Uh, what would you say to that person that's like, you know, they've had a million different jobs and really kind of like not really a master of anything, but a generalist in everything. Right. So they're like, I don't really even know if I have any skills. I don't know what I'm good at. Do you have any advice for that person? You know, what's interesting is a lot of us do have skills. We just don't feel confident in it. So if they've bounced around, they've done a hundred things. Um, when you started entrepreneurship, that's a really, here's a really key point I want to make, Sean. When you start an entrepreneurship, you never have to start perfect. You never have to start with a finely tuned, perfectly honed skill because that will come over time. And in fact, you could get coaching and training to get that honed in. So if you're waiting to get the perfect skill before you're launching your business, you're killing time. It doesn't make sense. If you have a, a skill, even if it's a, an intermediate skill to do something and it has to align with your passion, what the market wants, pursue it, man. Because once you pursue it, then you start validating and building out offers and figuring out what works and then you build at it. There's lots of graphic designers, social media people, funnel builders, a lot of people we know in marketing, you know, maybe funnel builders generally, they start as uh, they're really good at doing a website or doing a landing page and then they expand on it. So, so when someone says that to me, when they say, well, I don't really have a perfect skill, I kind of do a bunch of different little, little different things. That's what I tell them. Well, all right. So pick a few of them, align it with your passion and with the market and start there, start there. Yeah, no, I wish I met you like four or five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have saved myself a lot of pain, man. <laughs> yeah, but you know what, Sean? I'll tell you another thing, and this might sound a little like why you don't need a coach, but those scars make you strong, man. Like, I, I wouldn't be where I am if I, if I didn't fail so miserably. You still need the failures. I, and so the interesting thing about what I do is I do coach people, and I mitigate risk, and I you know try and minimize it, but I don't shield them from it. So, you know, having the bumps you did, Sean, it's made you who you are. Right. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's absolutely true. It's, sometimes I just wish it would have done it a little faster. <laughs> fair, fair. That's fair. Uh, that's, that's totally fair. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's good insight. Thanks for that too. Um, so let's talk again about the passion then. So, because, you know, there's always that around there was like, well, I've got a million different passions. I got a lot of things that I'm really passionate about. Like I like this, I like that. And, and, and it's legitimate. Like they've got like maybe 20 hobbies, yeah. Uh, yeah, what, yeah. You know, so how, how do you kind of narrow that down? I mean, you know, is that, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. So another great question. So what I, uh, I do meet a lot of um, entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs who have that squirrel syndrome, right? You know, the shiny light syndrome. Oh yeah. And uh, so of course they have a thousand passions, but honestly, Sean, it always comes back to patterns. So what I do is I tell them, okay, you've written down all the stuff you'd love to do on a board, take a step back and holistically, Look at all those things you love to do and what's in, what's common among them. 
So when people say, you know, I love to do this, 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 the commonality might be, these are all things with people or they love doing a hundred other things. And the commonality is these are all things where you're in charge. So it's always looking for that like holistic common pattern. What is it that ties all these things together? And uh, that's what you want to pursue. Right. And again, even if you find something that's amazing, it still has to match with your previous skills and what the market will bear. So sometimes it's not a perfect trifecta. Like you've got these three, you have a passion to do something, but then the market's looking for something that's almost kind of what your passion is. Sometimes there's a bit of adjustment, but it always, it comes down to looking at patterns among all the different things you love to do. There's always something in common. Yeah. So really looking for that root or that foundation, like what do they all have in common at yeah. the base level, right? Yeah. What makes, what, what excites you about it? Is that you're with people? Is that you're isolated and alone in your basement? Is it, uh, <laughs> right. um, is it that you get to be creative or is it that you love systems, right? Like there's something in there that really excites you. It's just a matter of finding that pattern. I always throw, throw everything back into a pattern. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm into, I'm definitely a pattern person for sure. So I, I, that's, that's good advice. Cause uh, again, that would have saved me a whole lot of trouble, but way back when, <laughs> yeah, fair, I mean, cause fair. I'm asking these questions, but these are basically, you know, what I struggled with, you know, and, and not, not just me, but a lot of people are, have the same problems where, you know, I do a little of everything or I've got way too many interests and I, what does the market want? I don't even know what that means. I mean, that's literally stuff I've struggled with. So I know that our audience is going through some of that same stuff. Yeah. So, um, and speaking about, um, the skills, right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of go back there again for just a second, because, mm -hmm. you know, you said just kind of pick something and you don't have to be a master at it, but so can you just, is it okay to say, I just want to pick something else I'm interested in and learn it and then create something off of something that you just, you want to learn, or is it better to kind of start with something that you've got until you can kind of get something going and then make a switch if you need to? Yeah, another great question. Yeah. It's all about runway, right, Sean? So a lot of times when people are working full time and they're building a side hustle, they've got more runway, right? So they certainly can pick a new skill they want to learn and start progressing into it. Um, when you've got the person who's at their wits end at their job or they've lost their job, their runway is much shorter, right? They don't have a lot of savings in the bank. They've got a family they got to feed. When your runway is a lot shorter, your risk becomes higher. So when you say, well, I want to learn something in new and follow that path, it's a higher risk. It's a higher risk level. So I usually recommend that they actually start with what they know. And then as they evolve their business and as they evolve as an entrepreneur, if they want to learn new things and add those skill sets, certainly they can. But it always comes down to how much room do you have? How much risk tolerance do you have uh, to play with? That's usually how I define it. Yeah, no, that's that's a good analogy. I like that. I haven't really thought about it like that. So, I mean, thinking about it, that you need to take off faster than you need to uh, yeah. get something that it, it's already working for you, right? Kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's no reason why you can't pivot and adjust as you go. Mm -hmm. uh, but what it always comes down to is, you know, it's all about making sure we got the revenue we have to feed our families and keep ourselves safe. You can't, you can't, you, you, you can't be a successful business owner, let alone a successful entrepreneur when you're always worried about money. Cause that always comes through. That always comes through your yeah. marketing, your sales process, desperation always comes through. So you always want to make sure your belly's full before you start trying to feed other people. Right. That's yeah. That's cool. No, that's, that's really good too. Man, a lot of good insights. I hope everybody's getting this because what right. Bob is saying, man, it's like spot on. If I had known you, Bob, I'm telling you four years ago, <laughs> uh, I'd probably be long whale on my way right now. <laughs> well, Sean, if you've got a passion, a skill in the market, and I'll tell you, the market does demand the time machine. I bet you any money. <laughs> you that, that would answer all your challenges. You'd be all good. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. that's good. So do you like... Do you have any final like words of wisdom or any other insights that you'd like to share along this idea for, you know, those people trying to get their business going? Yeah. You know, and this is a lesson I learned the hard way too, is, you know, uh, always define your time, right, Sean? So when I meet people and they say, well, I got to quit my job, always define your time. So if you say, I'm going to quit my job, is that six months? Is that 12 months? Is that 18 months? Always make sure you know what your runway is because what happens then is it, it, you stay committed to those goals and objectives. You really understand, okay, I've got to work on this. I've got to work on this. I've got to work on this. It's, 
you got to be committed. So, you know, a lot of times I meet people who say I want to leave my job and they start a side hustle, but they haven't defined a time. Mm-hmm. They'll always say, you know what, Sean, I'll leave my job when I earn enough revenue. That's not it. Right. That, you know, we are beings that work well in structure. Most, most beings that work well in structure. So make that commitment. If you know you want to leave, figure out your financial needs analysis, right? Understand where your bucket of money is, what you have going in and what's coming out understand what kind of runway you can build and then define the time and see like ours, for example, our program, we do it in 12 months. We tell them in 12 months, you're going to be, we tell them in six months, you're going to match your revenue to your salary. And in 12 months, you'll double it. But in 12 months, you'll be fully capable to be on your own. So it's it, it, the best thing anybody can do to commit to that leap is just to find time before anything else define time. Yeah, that's really good. That's awesome advice. Thanks for that insight for sure, because that is something that a lot of people miss, something that I missed for a long time. I would, I, I think I put it for my goal exactly what you had said. Uh, I'll quit yeah. my job when I have enough money coming in off the business. But yeah, when does that really happen, right? So putting Right, it and, that's, to- and that's totally normal, Sean. Feeling like that and believing that's totally normal. But what you find is, Again, we, we tend to make excuses or we kind of let things go. We just don't commit to it. When we say I have a year and I'm going to do this in a year, I have a runway for a year, then, you know, you made that commitment. You know what I often tell people, Sean, too, is to make part of that commitment, build a calendar, build a schedule in the year. What are you doing? What's your one-year goal? What's your quarterly goal? What's your monthly goal? What's your weekly goal? So that you know what you have to accomplish to get there. Time is a, de- time, is a time is a definition is a really great way to do it for sure. <laughs> it sounds like somebody back there agrees. <laughs> yeah, he loved it. He loved it. <laughs> awesome. No, that's really great, Bob. I appreciate the awesome insights. And I know this is just going to help a lot of people that are in that, that struggle of how do I get started? So if there's anybody out there that wants to find out more or get in touch with you on a deeper level, I mean, where, where can they find you? Well, the best way to do it is I, I have a free group on um, a Facebook group there where it's called fire your boss for good it's designed to help people really develop those skill sets so they can not only leap from entrepreneur not leap to entrepreneurship from their corporate job but they don't have to go back so you know look out for that facebook group it's called fire your boss for good in there i'm uh, i just started up the group so i'm starting a webinar in a week uh free webinar completely to really talk about how to cultivate and develop that idea so uh if people can just do a search for that on facebook i'm happily connect them and bring them in the group and can start that way for sure yeah, good. I'll make sure we get that, the link to that in the uh, show notes so people can find it really easy. But Bob, yeah, thanks for your time, man. I really appreciate uh, you, you coming on and sharing with us. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Sean. Thanks for joining me on today's episode. I really hope you found it valuable. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you would share it with somebody that you think might also find it valuable. And if you haven't already, you know, please subscribe to the show so you don't miss anything coming up in the future. Also, if you haven't already done so, be sure to hop on over to PurposeDrivenFunnels.com and get on my email newsletter over there so that I can share some you know, secret insights that only people on that email newsletter are going to get. And I'm really working on some big projects and things that I'm going to be putting out there for free that are really going to help you guys start your business and get it off to a start even faster than what I did. So get on over there and get signed up for that, and I'll see you on the next episode. Until then, I'm wishing you success on your purpose-driven business journey. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.